Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Everyone and everywhere I go now, here's Melinda. Well, with me on this episode of Talk of the Desert is the gentleman who wrote, sang, performed, arranged, played the music of the new theme song for Talk of the Desert, and that's Frankie Randall. That's me. That's and you. <laughs> and I'm always happy to hear that song underneath your show. And moreover, yeah. I'm uh, always happy to do your show because it means that I'm busy in uh, in the desert here. That's right, and you are busy. Tell yes. us what's coming up on March 7th. March 7th, I'm going back to the McCallum Theater, but this time with a totally different show. And it's a show that consists of um, uh, a bunch of Italians is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, I hope there's food that comes with it. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> there might be. There might be. <laughs> might be a surprise there. Uh, anyway, it's called That's Italian. And it stars some very good friends of mine, moreover, some very talented people. We have Julius La Rosa coming in from New York, uh, Dick Contino, presently living in Las Vegas, Pete Barbuti, presently living in Las Vegas, and of course me. So that's four Italians right there. Uh, a, you've got a, the greatest accordion player, I think, that's on oh, this earth today. Absolutely. He's, uh, we, we've seen With him. With Dick Contino, yes. He is just sensational. And uh, at his age, and I, I don't know that he talks about his age, you know, publicly or not, but he's it's, certainly... Everything's on the internet, Frankie, so nothing, oh, <laughs> nothing can say. You're you know? right, you're right. Well, <laughs> Dick, who's in his 70s, the way he keeps himself physically in shape to be able to do those things that he does with the accordion is sensational. How many pounds is an accordion weigh? Do you know? Well, I, 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 the first time I ever tried an accordion, yeah. I, I was, uh, I, we were living, of course, I grew up in New Jersey. And uh, in, in the summertime, we used to go to the, to the shore, like they say. The shore in New Jersey. Not the beach, not the ocean, the shore. <laughs> and I used to work places uh, from Seaside Heights all the way down to Wildwood. And uh, just for the summer, then go back to school, and I went to school in North Jersey. So <laughs> we we got a job in Deal, which is just outside of Asbury Park, very upscale, lovely community, and they had the Deal Casino at the time. However, one of the jobs the, on the Saturday afternoon we had to play, perform by the <laughs> swimming pool. Well. It, it was way before electric pianos, way, way before anything like that. So I needed an accordion. So <laughs> the, the, the fellow who had the band, fortunately enough, said, listen, I'll contribute something toward the accordion, but you're going to need an accordion because we're going to have to play outdoors. And of course, outdoors in the summertime when it's nice and muggy and... and uh, Especially <laughs> and in New Jersey, right? you have to do right? this yes, in the yes, sun, you yes. know, or maybe under an umbrella if you're lucky. But uh, anyway, that's when I started playing an accordion. The que to answer your question as to how heavy it was, it seemed like it weighed a ton for me in those <laughs> days. But the, more importantly, to be able to rhythmically get the things that Dick goes, uh, does when he does the songs like Lady of Spain and whatever else. So he's marvelous, and, and, and I'll, let, I'll but, let your audience see well, it. Dick, the, Dick is, I think, very developed in his shoulders and his chest because of having, he's playing this musical instrument that it, weighs, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds? I would say, say at least that. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you've got a, each one of those buttons, and I have no idea how many buttons there are. It's You have the a regular, for example, going across the line, you have a C, and a C major scale, and a C minor scale, and a C seventh scale, or whatever, and it goes up and uh, up and down, and you have to feel your way around these little buttons at the same time that you're playing a keyboard, <laughs> and you're going like this, you know? It's one of these kind of things, you know? So, you did that very well. Oh, thanks. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. you have to practice this before you play the accordion. <laughs> right, okay. okay. So, you got, and then you have Pete Barbuti, and if, for any of your oh, He viewers, in the kick and the pants. <laughs> I, I, every so often, I'll go on the internet just to go to Pete Barbuti's uh, website. I think it's Barbuti.com. PeteBarbuti.com. He has some very funny things on, 
on that website of his. Uh, one thing in particular, when he's playing piano, and, and he's a very good piano player and an accordion player as well. Uh, Pete is kind of like an all-around musician who just was funny and decided <laughs> that was where his career was versus being a musician. But uh, he's playing with the uh, Doc Severinsen band. On and The Tonight Show. On The Tonight yeah, Show, yeah. The Tonight it, Show. It, this yeah. bit is on his yeah, website. Yeah. And there's all sorts of great things that you can enjoy and laugh in the wee hours of the morning if, if, if you can't go to sleep on PeteBarbuti.com. Then we have Julius. Well, wait a second, but you didn't finish that. He was playing with the uh, Doc Severinsen band. Well, I don't want to give the bit oh, away. Oh, you don't want to, because he may do the bit here on, in the, at the uh, McCallum, He might, huh? he might, okay, because okay. it's very funny oh. where he's playing along and he cues the it band is. and all the stuff that happens. Yes, it is. And then we have, like I say, Julius LaRosa. And Julie, of course, anybody that knows good music and is old enough... Uh, Old enough as I am, <laughs> old as I am. <laughs> but if if you are, you certainly remember Julie as still to this day being one of the excellent, great voices in the business. So it's going to be lots of fun. Then we have no, no, no. Wait a second. No, wait a second. This is Frankie Randall presents That's Italian. Yes. Starring P, uh, Julius LaRosa, Pete Barbuti, Dick Cantino, and Frankie Randall. Randall, where's, that's not an Italian last name. You're going to make me give it away. <laughs> I'm going to make it. It's on your website. Okay, well, again, that's <laughs> okay. okay. It's on my website. Well, my real last name for anybody who's a friend of mine close to me or has ever read my website, <laughs> uh, uh, my real last name is Lisbona, L I S B O N A. Francisco. Giuseppe Lisbona <laughs> is my name. So I am all Italian. My parents were all Italian. My grandparents were all Italian. So uh, uh, anyway, so I'm, I can, I can like realistically feel that I'm a part of that's Italian. So uh, anyway, Absolutely. in addition yes. to that, a couple more Italians. We have Pat Rizzo's big man, and we'll feature Pat on a song, and he's certainly a a local favorite here in the valley. No joke. Pat Rizzo is the one musician that I say that has been able to sustain in this valley for so many years, and he's got a great name and a wonderful orchestra. And Vinnie Falcone is coming in from Las Vegas to conduct uh, for this. So we we wanted to add a few more Italians, but we we, we feared an investigation. <laughs> 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 oh, really? Is yeah. that the New Jersey uh, well, mob? Well, <laughs> you know, you get too many Italians in one room, they start questioning, what, what are those guys doing over there? In any event, it's, uh, it's going to be lots of fun. Um, uh, I invite all your viewers down. Uh, I don't even know if we have any tickets left. I, I spoke to them the other day, and they were, they were going very well. Good. I hope there are tickets left for anybody out there who who would like to come see the show. It's March 7th at 8 p.m. and the phone number is 340-ARTS. ARTS, 340-ARTS is for all tickets at the McCallum. Right, 340-ARTS. Yes. And uh, I know that too because I did a commercial for them. Uh, so uh, I, I had to mention, so it's 340-ARTS. Yes. March the 7th, that's Italian. That's right, that's right. Well, let's talk about how the show is going to flow. Oh, first of all, you know what? I have a little video clip of three of you boys for, for That's Italian. Maybe we can cue that up and we could talk about the boys over it. I love to see. You don't mind them calling them boys, do you? No, I no. still love being. <laughs> I still act like a boy. Not, not only love being a boy. I, I, the I, difference I, between men and boys is the price of their toys. Yeah, boy it, gets expensive as he grows. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, Robert, if you can cue that up, well, there they are. Oh, there they are. Okay. Yes, well, this was when we all got together in Las Vegas to talk down the the show, and there's Pete in the middle, and and Dick Contino on the left side of your screen. Um, and Pete has always got a story, no matter what you talk about. He's got a story. If you say, well, Chicago, oh, well, when I was in Chicago, and he's got two or three jokes that he can do about, uh, about whatever or wherever you speak. Uh, and of course, Dick Contino, look how good he looks. Looks fabulous. He really does. Well, you mentioned earlier that he, uh, he uh, his, he's well developed and in great shape. Well, in addition to playing the accordion, which in itself is a uh, is a heck of an exercise to go through, um, he goes to the gym every day. 
so he, he you know, he, it's it's one thing feeds the other. In other words, his good shape feeds the fact that he can play accordion well, mm -hmm. and the fact that he can still play accordion mm -hmm. well. I look like I'm a little nervous. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you're playing the accordion, isn't yeah, that it? That's, yeah. Well, that's what yeah. I meant, but I think your, your viewers tuning in see me go like this and wonder, what is wrong with him? You know? uh, so, yeah, he does keep himself in great shape. So, he does. Yeah. Well, I don't think Pete can talk without a cigar in his hand. He does so many things with that cigar. He does a, a, a song called Cute. Uh, and I won't give that away either, but it's the ba da 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 da, you know that that's cute. And he does a, a riff beat with with a cigar. Uh, he yes, he does incorporate. He's got several jokes about the cigar. One happens to be my favorite. Uh, I hope. I you, hope and we can't give away because yeah, we gotta no, have we people come see the yeah. show, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he, he he's he, he's great. He's got he's got funny stuff about everything. In mm -hmm. fact. Um, um, our dear friend Sonny King passed away a, 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 about a month or so ago uh, and they had a memorial for him a couple of weeks ago and it was just wonderful uh, the way all these performers from Las Vegas came to give tribute to a guy who had entertained them for years and Pete did an outstanding job as did Rich Little um, Robert Goulet I'm happy that I was honored to say a few words a fellow by the name of Frankie Shinta, who's at, with the Shintas at the Rio. He handled it very well. Peter Anthony, Nelson Sardelli. It was a wonderful send off, and Sonny would have loved it. Oh, he it would absolutely would have loved it. But Pete it. was very so funny sure. at that. Yes, very much so. Well, let's talk about, Lisa, you've got, uh, oh, Vinnie Valcone was on Talk of the Desert a couple of weeks ago. Right, he just wrote And you that joined book. him there because he's been working this past week with uh, Stephen Eady at the McCallum, and he's working with you on March 7th. Yeah, well, Vinny is probably one of the most sought-after uh, conductors in this business. Uh, as most people who know the name Vinny Falcone know uh, that he was with Frank Sinatra for so many years, uh, 10 years, uh, I, I think is the number. Uh, but he just wrote a book, frankly speaking, Frankly between you and Frankly me. Frankly between you and me. And it's about his time on the road and spending time with Frank Sinatra. Um, and he's with Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. He works with Robert Goulet. He's worked with Jack Jones, Tony Bennett. He's wonderful. And, and Frankie Randall. And Frankie Randall. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's a wonderful piano player and a great conductor. So he'll be conducting Pat's fantastic big band in this valley that works all the major events. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Well, as I said on the show with Vinny, is you've got to watch, the audience when they go see either had seen Steve or Edie this past week or come to see you, they've got to watch Vinny conduct in the background because he really conducts the orchestra. Well, and he's intense about what he yes. does. Uh, uh, he when he's on that stage, as most performers uh, either do have or should have, uh, he has tunnel vision as to what he's doing. Uh, you can't wander too far, as you well know. Once the lights go on here, the camera's on. <laughs> you can't just kind of sit back and, and do nothing. You I, have oh, to... I've slept through a couple of my shows. Oh, you have? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's not Hopefully this not. one. Hopefully <laughs> not. Yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You know, my guests have all been just fantastic yeah. guests. But no, Vinny really does conduct the orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he really gets into what he's doing, and he loves what he's doing. But then again, that's my philosophy on life in general. Whatever you're going to do as a, as a career, uh, be sure that you love it. And, and in fact, on my website, you know, that opening uh, uh, statement of mine where I welcome people to FrankieRandall.com, uh, I mention how I can't believe that I get paid to do something like this. Uh, that, uh, it's, it's been a joy for me to be able to entertain people and to have been able to make my living at it has just been glorious. Well, when we come back from the break, Frankie, we're going to talk more about Julius Arosa, who's the fourth person of this group He's of... He's actually the first person, I think. Crazy Italians. <laughs> well, it's, it's listed. It's listed no, as... No, no, I'm not talking about necessarily a category. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking more in... I hate to say this, age. You know, I, I think I think I might be either. We'll make sure Julie doesn't see this. Yeah, I, I might be either the baby of this group or a second from the baby of this group. I'm not too sure, but it'd be, yes, it'd be interesting to talk about that. But and 
he still sounds and oh, looks terrific. Fabulous. And we're also going to talk about some of the musicians that will be performing with you on March 7th at the McCallum. Thank you. We'll be right back with uh, Frankie Randall and That's Italian. That's Italian. <laughs> it's Italian. <laughs> Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. Well, with me is that's Italian Frankie Randall. Yes. March 7th at the McCallum. Yes. Yes. Uh, we need to talk about Julius La Rosa. Well, Julia La Rosa, uh, for anyone who, who knows anything about the music business, remembers when Julie first started with uh, Arthur Godfrey. He was on his radio show and his television show. And we're talking some years ago now, but he has sustained. Of course, he was in diapers at that time. So. I was yeah, in, of course, I was yeah, in diapers, yeah. Because yes. I'm the baby of this. That's, that's right, Italian exactly. Group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, I think I, I'm proclaiming myself as the baby of okay. that Italian. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, he uh, and then had a radio show for a long while. He was on uh, WNEW, which is now uh, in QEW, QEW in New York, very big station. And Julie uh, had uh, uh, a show there for a long while. Now he's just singing full time. He just got back from Florida. I spoke to him yesterday. Mm -hmm. He did uh, three weeks down there uh, with Anna Marie Alberghetti and uh, different shows. That the, in fact, Dick Contino just got back from Florida as well. He was down there working with Al Martino. So it seems that there's a resurgence of Italians working again. So, and, and I'm <laughs> I happy. guess that's good. Yeah, huh? I hope it's good, yeah, sure. Well, actually, you know, when you think about it, with the exception of maybe Steve Lawrence and Jack Jones and a couple of others, most of your big singers, even dating back to Mario Alonso or Perry Como or whatever, uh, there were, again, certain exceptions in that era, like the Bing Crosby's. But when you think about Italian or oh, singers, and, you kind of almost and Frank think Sinatra. Italian. We can't leave Frank Sinatra, Sinatra out. <laughs> Sinatra, uh, 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 Dean, Dean Martin. Martin, right? Sammy Davis, I think. Quite <laughs> Italian somewhere. <laughs> he would have claimed that, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we're we're kind of back in style again, you know. If we can just bring Vic Damone out of retirement. But we'll you never okay. thought you went, went out of style, did you? <laughs> no, I, let's hope we didn't. Yeah, no. exactly. What is it? Is it the fact that you grew up in an Italian family that you have a lot of music around you, or what? Well, my dad was a trumpet player, and uh, he didn't do it as a full time, but he he worked weekends, and it, it was kind of a little more money for the for the household to sustain itself. Because uh, he was always always had a regular job. In fact, he used to always tell me long after I got into sh show business and making records and everything, he used to say, yeah, "But yes, someday you have to get a real job." You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I won and I did. I became uh, an entertainment director and vice president of entertainment for Steve Wynn at the Golden Nugget, and then later on for Bally's. So I did get a real job for a short time of my life, yeah. about ten years or so. Yeah. But um, I love this not having this kind of real job. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. A, it's fun. Now, wait a second. We got to back up a couple of minutes ago. We m named all these Italians. We left off now our a new local person, Buddy Greco. 
<laughs> Buddy Greco building a supper club That's right here right, in town. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, uh, we saw him um, the other night. At and the, Jerry Vale, local person. Jerry Vale <laughs> See, doesn't have at, a nightclub. No, doesn't have yeah. a nightclub. But yeah. look, look at all these uh, all these Italians that are entertainers. Yeah, it is Didn't amazing. I just say that. Yeah, I know, yeah, but, I know. It, but I'm just adding a few more people we, because we can't leave out, you know, these two local people. Oh, absolutely, you know? especially so. uh, Jerry. There's not an Italian uh, household anywhere in this country, probably anywhere in the world, that doesn't have a Jerry Vale record. In I'm it. sure. He's, he's a he's a household name among Italians. Um, not long ago, we were in Chicago together, and uh, we walked into this restaurant, this Italian restaurant, and uh, the bartender spotted Jerry Vale. And you know how they have that little well where they keep the, the well drinks, you know, right. the scotches and whatever else. The bartender put his foot on the well, his next foot on the bar, jumped over the bar <laughs> just to run over to Jerry and shake his hand. So yeah. he, he, he's, he certainly left a huge mark in, uh, in show business. And every so often there's rumor about Jerry Vale going back on stage and singing again. I know he's got so many fans out there who would love to see him do that. Whether he does or not, of course, is And as my audience choice. knows, because Jerry selected the Talk of the Desert to be the first interview he did after his illness. He had a stroke about four years Almost ago. Almost four years ago now. Yeah, yeah, over four years ago now, I think, yeah. something like that. So, But he's doing marvelously. He's just not back performing like he was. So. I have a feeling that he's... Uh, uh, after so, so many years of not doing it and being able to relax and not have to worry about doing anything, I, I think there's a, kind of a benefit to, to <laughs> living a life like that as well. But really? again, his fans would love to see him walk back on stage. We and, all and would yeah, love to see him back on me, stage. Me, certainly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about the Pat Rizzo band, the, the musicians that are going to be with you on March 7th. Well, Pat consistently has great uh, uh, bands that he puts together, and they, for the most part, a lot of the same guys. And uh, uh, Jack Poster on trumpet, and Stan Watkins, and uh, he's got his group of great players. But a fellow who I work with all the time when I work in this area and is available is uh, Jeff Stover on bass, and Tommy Check is going to come in from uh, Las Vegas. And Tommy was with us for the 150 shows that we did at the Annenberg Theater, the Sinatra My Way shows. Is Tommy's it, a wonderful drummer. He's worked with Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, and, and he, well, he's worked with the best of them. He's, Peter Marshall? Peter Marshall, he's worked yeah. worked with Peter it, Marshall, yes. Yeah, he worked with Peter here not long ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, Peter was so nice at the, the, at the Platinum Circle party to... Uh, for the Sinatra, we all, for the Frank Sinatra Countrywide Celebrity Golf Invitational event. Wow, that's a that's a <laughs> tongue twister to remember. It is. Yeah, but and I, I refer to it as the Sinatra tournament. Yes. With all due I respect think we all to do. our dear friends at Countrywide, yes. Angelo Mozillo and uh, uh, Sebastiano. Uh, more Stephen. Italians. More more Italians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the uh, but Peter was very gracious and. Yeah, and very good. He he he, uh, he talked about my appearing, at, of course, at the. Uh, at the McCallum, and he was there not long ago, and he, he said he had a great time there. Of course, that's a great theater. The last time I worked there was with the Indian Wells Desert Symphony, which is wonderful. Uh, and a time, a couple of times I worked there with Steve Allen and Louis Nye and um, uh, Don Knotts, who unfortunately we just lost recently, yes. and Steve Allen, of course, we lost some years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a man who made so many people come forward to the spotlight. Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet certainly be one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, all those comedians, Don, uh, Don Knotts, Louis Nye, Tom Poston, uh, just on and on and on. He made stars. Of course, that was, that was an era that people like Johnny Carson and uh, 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 Merv Griffin and so many people made entertainers. Now, it's, it's not the same. It's lots of reality television and some of it's good and some of it you know but uh, I wish there were more shows you know variety shows where you could see some entertainment. Why do you think there's not any variety shows on TV anymore? I don't know we all remember yeah. the of course the Ed Sullivan and the Milton Burrow era and the, uh, the uh, Carol Burnett shows and Danny Kaye's and shows that I did the um, uh, Merv of course had a show uh, um, Carson made so many uh, 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 well, but Ed, he loved comedians. Our friend Rich Little uh, is is really 
thankful that there was a Johnny Carson. Mm -hmm. and, well, even David Letterman, Johnny Carson made David Letterman. That's right. He made Jay Leno. But that yeah. he would he helped develop talent. Well, I had Tom Dreesen on recently. Um, in fact, it was last week, and uh, Tom talked about that. Uh, that Johnny Carson helped make 60 comedians I out of this show, it. you know, that and lots of songs. singers, and yes. uh, not unlike the Steves and the Mervs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish yeah. there were more, at least one television show like that. You exactly. know, in fact, our local friend Jack Jones had a, a show f that he did in Canada called the The Palace. Mm -hmm. And he had great entertainment. So did Judy Garland years ago. So did so many people. And I wish there were some television programming like that today. Well, Frankie, we only have a couple of minutes left of this half hour. Let's recap the Tuesday night, March 7th, coming up here real quick for yes. That's Italian at the McCallum. At the McCallum. Yeah. Again, with Julius La Rosa, Dick Consino, Pete Barbuti, and me. <laughs> Frankie Lisbona Randall. Frankie Lisbona, <laughs> yeah, my dad would like that. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Didn't your mom call you Chico? What, from, it was short from Francisco. In fact, when Sinatra used to call, if I'd pick the phone up, he'd say, hey, Cheech, you know? And of course, him saying it was like, it sounded like something coming from heaven. What kind of music can we expect from you on the McCallum? Uh, of course, I'll do a couple of Sinatra songs because mm -hmm. the people here do miss hearing that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, well, I may do an Italian song or something. Oh, really? I'm, I'm not giving yeah. the whole show away. I have to come there. Yeah, March you have to buy some tickets and find yeah. out what's going to happen. And I think there's going to be some su couple of surprises on stage too. You think so? Yeah, I think I, I think I know what's going to happen. But okay. I can't, see, my lips are sealed. So well, I don't know. I don't know. They're saving it all for me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that you can go to dickcontino.com if you want more information on Dick. Um, I think it's barbooty.com. I don't think it's Pete Barbooty. I think it's barbooty.com. You, you, you may be right. Barbooty.com. But but do a search on the internet. Yeah. For FrankieRandall.com. Yes. Uh, I think there's JuliaSarosa.com also. Yeah. Yeah. So you all have your web pages. We're all over the place. Exactly. Especially at the McCallum, March seventh. It's three four zero A R T S. Yes. <laughs> Any other comments, Mr. Italian? No, just okay. uh, uh, you'll certainly be at the show, and I'm Absolutely. happy you will be. And uh, uh, whoever whoever your your viewers are watching us right now, please come see us. Okay. Well, Frankie, <laughs> I gotta say this right, Frankie Lisbona Randall. Thank you for joining me on Talk of the Desert. Thank you, Melinda. Good luck with March seventh and everything. I know your boys are going to have. You don't mind me calling you boys, right? Please going to have a do call great boys. time yeah. at the McCallum. So don't miss it, everybody. Great. Thank, thank you, you, Frankie, for joining me, and thank you, audience, for joining. Me. For more information, email. TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.